Coach, obviously it was a war. Just your thoughts on the game and I guess looking at your team being pushed maybe for the first time this year. Y'all liked that, didn't you? Made you stay. Now you got to work all night. It's not a war, but I understand your comment. War is real. This is game we play. It was just a very good basketball game. If I had to sit here and criticize us, I couldn't do it. What I would tell you is you just won a game where a team shot 58% in the third and fourth quarter. The difference between the first time we played them and tonight, off the top of my head without looking at film, was post play. Not that they dominated our post. If you look at the stats, our posts both had double-doubles. It was threes that they didn't get last time. I think they got 34 points from post play, a combination of people they used, and then running the floor in transition when we would fan out and worry about the three-point shot. That was the difference, and it happened in different stages of the game. Um, then late in the game, they started hitting some threes. It's a good game. We dominated the boards, which we did the first time we played them. Uh, sometimes you just leave and go, that's a good game. It's a good game for women's basketball, good game for the SEC. Uh, great student <laughs> section tonight. First okay. time we've seen them in forever. Um, yeah. Yeah, Angel, along those lines, uh, what was it like for y'all to go through the ups and downs of this game and uh, especially late offensively, you know, executing in the clutch and just what was it like for you? Um, I think it's something that we really needed. We haven't seen um, to have this early on is something that we really need, especially at home. We couldn't do it without our crowd, the student section, all the fans came out for this 8 o'clock game is something that we really needed. But I just try to step up and be a leader, bring our team together. Um, a lot of some of our teammates haven't been in a moment like this. So just trying to guide them and keep them poised and keep them calm. Well, Jay, I'm sure many times in high school you had the ball in your hands in these clutch situations, but it's the first time, you know, in the closing seconds in, in, in college. Just talk about getting that opportunity and, and coming through for your team there. How, do, how, did you, how did you feel? Are there nerves there or are there not? Oh, my God, I didn't even feel nervous. Like, I shoot that shot every day. I'm like, I make that shot every day. So it was like, just do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be in the gym a lot. So at that point, I was like, I'm not going to let my team down. And then I want to be in these situations at the end of tight game. So <laughs> I got to score this so coach can keep me in these type situations. Well, look at her stats, guys. If there's a better freshman in this league, I, her, look at her stats. She just played 31 minutes in a three-point victory. She's seven for nine, four for four from the foul line. She gives you six rebounds. The only bad stat is what? Tell them. Turnovers. Turnovers. Oh, my God. God. Turnovers. Um, you're looking at a kid. She broke the record tonight right here, didn't Tied. she? Tied. Tied it. Okay. You're looking at a kid right here that's a freshman in a big moment. I'm blessed. And, and they got ice water in their veins. Uh, we could have panicked when we were down three. Um, they probably led each other better than I led them as a coach in, in certain situations tonight. Kim, Alexis didn't start tonight. You started um, Poa. Uh, and I thought Poa did an outstanding job. Think about how we started. Was that not – I mean, I got – I think I busted my jacket. I got so fired up. I've been looking for that kind of start. Okay? So I know I'm going to finish your question. She knows why she didn't start. Because I'm gonna, I know that's where you're going. Why didn't she start? Okay, no coach is gonna tell you the decisions that sure. they make. She's not injured. She shot big time at the end of the ball game and made buckets. Decisions coaches make sometimes just doesn't need to be shared with anybody. But boy, was she good tonight. The reason I interrupted Jim. I want Poa to get some credit there. That kid played 20 plus minutes, and I know she wanted to be on that floor down in the clutch, and I just got to make decisions on different things. Why did I have this one in? Well, only coach knows that. She's just a better passer maybe in that moment, a little bit bigger. But Poa was big for us tonight. 
Uh, Flaj, after the game, you seem to be pretty emotional, talking a lot, talking a lot to Alexis. And mm -hmm. I know you're number four, but you were saying a lot about the number four or, or something like that. What? <laughs> oh, when I was talking to Alexis, I was just telling her, like, like, that's just the way that you lead a team. Like, that's just the way you respond. You know what I'm saying? And that we just a team. We just going to keep growing and getting better. But me personally, oh, I'm big four. That's my <laughs> number. That's my number. I'm big four. So, you know. Y'all understand what she's saying? Slow down. You big what? <laughs> I'm big four. Four. One, two, four. She's big four. four. Oh, I'm from Savannah, baby. I'm four. big four. She's big four. Isn't that her number, right? Yes, ma'am. You got to remember. You got to slow down. My bad, y'all. Thought it was for the fourth free throws you made at the end, but oh yeah, that too. Yeah, came in the clutch. One, two, three, four. <laughs> this girl. Angel. It sounds like a might have to do what you call it. Freestyle. Freestyle well, tonight. Come on now. Oh, uh, just a couple of quick things for Angel. Just there was a, a big defensive rebound you had near the end of the game, and then there was a little exchange with Alexis. You, were, you remember talking to her there near the baseline? It looked pretty intense, and I was wondering if you could. If you could share any of that, and then just in general, um, give us a sense of what your mindset was like down the stretch. Um, it was a, obviously you were gesticulating a lot and very outwardly emotional and intense, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, it was a lot going on. But I told Alexis, um, big players make big shots at the right time, and I told her to step up and make some of those shots. I knew that that rebound, that defensive stop was going to be the most important stop of the game. I mean, I don't really take plays off, so. Getting that rebound was important to me, no matter where it was, out of my, out of my range or wherever it was. I was going to go get that rebound in case the shot went miss. So I got the rebound and I was happy and I was I was emotional because we that was a tough game for us. So I'm excited. Angel on the broadcast, they showed you telling the team, "I can't do this without y'all." Kind of what was going through your head while you're trying to rally your troops, essentially. Yeah, we, I was just telling them every we need everybody for this from top to bottom, from the coaches to the bench to the players on the court. I need everybody. Nobody can do this one-man show. So I, I can't do this by myself. I can't get over all the rebounds by myself. I can't score all the points by myself. I need my team. My team has got my back through everything, and I love them so much. That's what you call a leader, right? Yes. She's trying to motivate. Alexis Morris made a great comment with about three minutes to go, and we were down three. I want to tell her what she said. She told us, she told us don't panic. I mean, Alexis is, is a vet to a lot of us. She's been through the game. She's seen a lot of things that many of us haven't seen. So she was just telling us to stay calm, stay stay poised, and just keep our composure. Hey, Joanna, we've asked you about this a lot, but you finally tied Sylvia's <laughs> record. Uh, what does it mean to tie the record of someone who is going to be in the Naismith Hall of Fame one day? And uh, did you have a chance to talk with her yeah. when she was here Sunday? Yeah. Was it the first time? What, what was that? Yeah, so my first time meeting her was um, Sunday, and it was just all her love. She gave me a hug. Her hugs are amazing, so I love that. Um, but she's really proud of me. I got her number, and being able to connect with her and talk to her still. And she's happy for me. Um, being able to be up there with Sylvia Files is amazing. And I'm just excited. I can't do it, without again, without my teammates, so I'm happy. Angel, did you feel like the game was more physical this time than the last time that, that, that oh, yeah. maybe Arkansas learned a little something kudos, about you? Yeah, kudos to Arkansas. They got better, for sure. I mean, they're they're going to be a good team. They're a good team right now. They scouted us well. We made a couple mistakes tonight, but, I mean, Arkansas did get better. They got physical with me early on um, in the beginning of the game. I wasn't able to score how I, how I usually easily score, but I think I kept my poise. Um, I took my time with my layups and my shots, so – I think it came to me at the end when I needed it. And, and Kim, um, I'm sure you've had games like this <laughs> where you've had seasons where you were doing really well and hit a game where where you you had some come up. And so what do you think going forward from this? Uh, where do you take it? Next game ready? Up, oh, you know, it's prepare for the next game. You know, it's – this was a great game tonight. Uh, we We made a few more plays than they did to win it and – we will flush it after tonight, get in the film room tomorrow and start talking about Roll Tide. Guys, we got time for a few more questions. Yeah, Coach, uh, Alabama up next, another team that shoots a lot of threes. Uh, is there anything obvious that you want to adjust defensively or anything like that with three, when it comes to three? I didn't think our defense was that bad. I really didn't. They, they spread you, so we took away. What did Poffenberg end with? You, you're, you're very concerned about her. 
And I thought we did a good job on her car. I'm very aware of her. That kid was at K-State when I was at Baylor. And all she needs is just a second to get a shot off. I thought she shot the ball pretty much contested a lot. They got some some runouts. Um, it was at the end of the half when I ran red, and they were going to get the ball back regardless. So it was, do I just go on and, and try to score early, uh, or do I put as few seconds with the ball in their hands as possible? And they got a run out. We didn't get back. Lex came off of there, and Jazz didn't get back. I mean, we work on that. We preach it every day. So Alabama's a little bit different than Arkansas. We had to play them here last year. We know they will shoot the three ball. But I think, you know, Christy and Kelly and I, we worked together at Louisiana Tech. We butted heads when I was at Baylor and they were at Texas Tech. She's, she's a good friend of mine. Um, and it's going to be a battle. Nowhere, guys, in our notebook was our goal to go undefeated. I'd tell you the same quotes tonight if we would have lost by three. It was a good basketball game. We grew up tonight. If we would have lost, I would have said the same thing to you. It feels better when you win. But that's just that was enjoyable tonight. Last question. Uh, Flage for you, and then Kim, I'll go to you real quick. Uh, I think this is about the third time that, that Kim's openly lobbied for you freshman of the year, whether it's SEC, potentially nationally, for her to, to, to take the mic and, and, and outwardly support you like that. What's it just mean for you and, and your growth and as you're adjusting to the college game? And then Kim, obviously, as the, as the game's really tight there at the end, you know, Flage as a freshman is stepping to the line. 18-plus games at that point, how, just how confident were you and her to, to deliver for her team tonight? You go first. Um, it really do mean a lot to him for me because I feel like Coach Moki really took a chance on me when nobody really wanted to take a chance on me for real, for real. Like, I had offers, but she really believed in what I wanted to do as far as with my music and playing basketball. And I feel like she had that confidence in me because I just – I'm in the gym a lot. And you know what I'm saying? I'm steady perfecting my craft. So she tell me stuff, like, in practice, like, and she really be on me. Like, she tell me if I'm – when I'm not on you, then it's a problem. So, like – it's just like, just keep putting in the work, but it just means a lot to me, and I'm just keep my head down and keep keep working. Let me just say, Flaugé is the hardest working player I've ever played with. She gets in the gym, she's hard on herself, she works very hard. To be an athlete, a student, and a rapper is hard, and she does it. Like, I don't see anybody else doing that, and as a freshman, being able to jumble everything that she does, Flage works. She works everything that she does. It shows on paper. She works. She works for everything that she does on the court, off the court, in the classroom. She does it. So I'm giving her freshman of the year. I, I, I got her freshman of the year over anybody. <laughs> well, let me explain what she means. I took a chance on her. Look, a lot of folks would love to have had her. Yeah. But what people didn't know was, is she truly, truly dedicated to basketball or is she truly dedicated to being a rapper? Because she just said it. How do you do both? Think about that. How, where do you find the time to do both? And we had that discussion. I sat with her and I said, do you love rapping more? Do you love this? You know, let's talk about this. And she said, Coach, I love basketball. And I think people have this misconception of me that I'm going to walk around with an entourage surrounding me and bring all these entourage people who love rap music and you're not going to be able to coach me and I'm going to... Are you kidding me? Her entourage is called Kia. <laughs> if you haven't met her mother, meet her. That's her momager. Is that what you call it? Yes, ma'am. Her mama manager? No cap. Okay. Y'all know what no cap means? <laughs> no cap. Do y'all know what no cap means? I didn't. The young people know what's going I had to on. Teach her. I she had, had to, teach. to teach me. Do y'all know what freestyle is? Yes. You do? Yes. Jim? See? I love all these people. <laughs> freestyle is when she just right now starts. And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you making up a song? It's not called that, coach. It's freestyle. And she has one now with my name in it, so she's going to get more minutes. <laughs> okay? You really, you really don't know 
how much effort and time this kid puts into basketball on top of what she goes back. If you ever go to her room, it's like a studio. And it's like, I, when does she sleep? That's when I will have a problem, is when her lack of sleep affects her basketball play. And it hasn't thus far. She wake up at 5 a.m., so I don't yes, know what she's so, doing. Guys, you got to see a good game today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the students. We appreciate y'all for coming. Please keep popping out. <laughs>